Professor Brian Brown's research shows that vulnerability fosters good emotional and mental health. It is a sign of courage. We become more resilient and brave when we embrace who we truly are and what we are feeling. The Vulnerable Scientist Podcast is a space for scientists to tell their honest and authentic stories. I am your host, Saranya Kerry, who happens to be a scientist, informal science communicator, and I help scientists create personal websites. If you want to support this show, go to www.patreon.com slash the vulnerable scientist. You can also follow this podcast on all social media platforms at TV Scientist Pod. But I was listening to one of your podcasts and someone was also going through what I've done and were rejected and they got this uh, bursary and a funding opportunity and it's normal. We don't talk about these things. We just feel bad about it and we keep quiet. So I'm, I'm very happy that you have this platform you know, to talk about our vulnerability because at the end of the day, we are human. Hi, welcome to another episode of Dr. Afra's story. And in this episode, she's talking about the highs that she's faced throughout their journey and she celebrated. And also she talks about her PhD, more details about her PhD. And I think this is the last episode of her story that I'm going to highlight as her story. The rest of the conversations that we had, I'm going to pick some parts of them and input here, of course, with her consent. Enjoy the, the episode so far as I think about what topics to, how to fr- structure the next episodes that have been taken from her conversation. That's the other down. I'm, I'm probably, maybe there's more, but I'm going to scare people out of academia. So <laughs> It's still a lovely place. <laughs> It's good good to speak about both sides. It's good to be real so that if someone comes in, they know what they're going to get. And that's why I started this space. I started this space because I want uh, uh, um, someone who's already in academia uh, can know that these things actually happen and this is how these people navigated them and this is how maybe I can borrow some ideas from how to navigate it. Or someone who actually doesn't know anything about science and they are young, they are cho- trying to choose a career path and before they go into that career path, let them mm-hmm. know what they are about to expect and you know, you. figure it out. Yeah. So Thank that's you. that's important to me. Yes, yeah, yeah, I hear you. And to hear it from someone who has made it far, like I was listening yeah. to your podcast and I was like, oh wow, these people are actually human at the end of the day. Um, you know, they're not just the, the, the degrees or the papers. They are human. They're talking about things. And I told myself, it's okay to go through this or to feel... I was some some point shy to say I was rejected from this funding. But I was listening to one of your podcasts and someone was also going through what I'd done. And were rejected and then they got this uh, bursary and a funding opportunity. And it's normal. We don't talk about these things. We just feel bad about it and we keep quiet. So I'm I'm very happy that you have this platform, you know, to talk about our vulnerability because at the end of the day we are human. So, um, so thank you. Uh, well, thank you for saying that. <laughs> yeah, it means a lot. Mm, okay. Um. So since you're not going to talk about other laws, <laughs> let's. <laughs> Yay! Finally, <laughs> the bright side. <laughs> Yeah, the bright side to everything. <laughs> yeah, the bright side. You see life from a, uh, a different lens. Mm, yeah. That's why some people say education is weapon or education is power. And you see people struggling and suffering. If you give them education, that's not going to, their life would improve. Mm. Because now the, the way of thinking has changed. It's not chasing the money, it's not chasing the, changing the materials. You, you, when you, I don't know. One thing I've learned from my um, scientific career or journey is to be self-sufficient. Mm. Um, you can give me anything and I'll make, I get by. However, when I, that's why when I first came to this big city, people were talking about cars, people were talking about clothes. And I was like, so when last did I? Does it matter? I don't know. This Maybe people from the fashion industry will disagree. 
But does it matter what brand or what make? Like, do we really have to talk about this for a whole hour about the type of bag, the color of bag, the type of a car? You where know, it came from. where it came, it's a BM. Oh my, uh, yeah, and especially when it's like I know this also personal when ladies speak about the uh, finding the partners. Yeah, it's different from where it uh, came from. He drives this car. He has this job. He does this that, and I was like. But is this what you are looking for in a man? Mm-hmm. Just the money, mm-hmm. and and he, ta- he yeah, and he takes me out and he pays for this, and and does this, and I was like, is this how you want to be treated? Is that all? To, yeah, to be dependent, you know, that he loves me, he loves me, he pays me more. Is this a kind of transaction you you want to have with your significant other? Like I was shocked because here the ladies uh, so far, I'm not gonna generalize. But the one that I spoke to, they don't use their um their own money. It was like, why why would I use mine if I can use his? <laughs> and here I am, come as a self sufficient scientist. I go if I go out, I pay for my food, and and some men see that as nice. Some some say it as a masculine trait, you know. It's a no. So um, we are still left confused. But anyhow. Back to the positives, a, um, education, it, it makes you see the world differently. And I want everyone to have access to it. Their life would improve. It's not about giving them the food, the money. No, it's giving them education. That's why one thing I'll make sure once I have the authority or the position, I would help sending more girls to school, even boys. Like, I wouldn't discriminate, but okay. given that there there is not equal representation of girls, and they want them to marry at an earlier age rather than going to school. So that's why they are less. We end up with a less number of uh, girls at school. And I'm not talking about university. No, I'm talking about really primary school and high school. So I want to give them that uh, vision, and they can choose for themselves. If you want to start a family, and oh, it's okay, but mm-hmm. at least I want yeah, you to know education. Yes, to know that you can do other things. Exactly. Some of them they don't know. And now they marry someone who are poor, the kids are poor, the kids are not performing and repeating the poverty cycle. So maybe one way to break that cycle is through education and access to education. So that's one thing I would like to start maybe in the future as a program. To maybe help them with the uniform, the school bags, check on them once in a while, give them allowance, motivate them to go. Mm. And discover the skills where what they are good at and maybe focus on that rather than just blindly send them to school and then just hope something will come out you know <laughs> like yeah pay attention yeah and maybe hire other mentors as well not because i can't just do this by myself Everything. but i will have a network of people who can regularly check and be assigned to a number of goals mm. and stuff like that we will change we can make a great impact so yeah that's the that's one thing positive is clarity, to see things clearer and to be self-sufficient. Mm. Exposure. Uh-huh, 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 yeah. So, mm-hmm. yeah, that's one of the highs. I think that's <laughs> that's what I can think of. Um, another high. Would you want another high? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. I don't know, when you do science, you sometimes feel like a sense of accomplishment. I don't know, that makes me happy. Mm-hmm. I feel like I have a purpose, like I've accomplished something. And I don't know, it, it depends on our different personalities, but I sometimes talk to other females and I find that they are empty. Or they, they, they say my mental state or health is not great, but sometimes I ask myself, it's because you are empty. You do not have the things that makes you running, the fuel. You can't be doing nothing and say that I'm mentally struggling because you haven't found your passion. So I'm glad that I'm not empty, I'm fulfilled. I have passion, something I truly love. And yeah, that's one thing, uh, one of the highs, is that it gives you a sense of accomplishment and a sense of purpose. Because you're also doing the science, you're contributing to the knowledge, you're helping people around the world, you're making a better uh, place for everyone. You try, um, mm. so this you're on the good side. So uh, that's one thing, uh, one of the highs. 
fun. Talking about that, what did you do? What um, projects did you do for your um, postgraduate education and how were they helping the community? Okay, yeah. Um, my project was focused on malaria. So um, I had to first, uh, like, it's like more like a campaign. You must mention that malaria is the deadliest um, disease, especially in developing countries in Africa, majority of the cases here. So sometimes you need to shed the light on the problem. Not mm-hmm. everyone outside knows. So one thing is I was promoting that. And then COVID came and uh, took the lights, you know. You know, no longer thinking about it. So that's one thing is to create awareness that majority of these cases are occurring in Africa and it's like an African problem and then maybe uh, we must find a solution. I know people are doing many or plenty of research. So my research was mainly focused on identifying uh, new drug targets. So these two enzymes have never been targeted before for malaria treatment. Um, the other two were targeted, but the drugs that were used, um, the parasite developed resistance. So the drugs are no longer effective or u- as effective as used to, and the parasites are now able to escape the effect of the drug. So leaving us with uh, the need to find new drugs for malaria. So uh, giving that, the, like you would give the, the patient the drug and they wouldn't respond to it, and the malaria would get them before the drug is working. Um, so microbial resistance yes exactly okay. yeah so I had some <laughs> this is okay so the resistance problem that was developed in this the, the classical target um, established the need for new targets so my project was mainly focused on validating these targets and also maybe find candidate drugs and all of this using computational approaches now, finding these new targets might pave the way to identify um, like more novel drugs um, with uh, you know favorable pro- better properties. Um, I also want to, if I you know, I if I had the time and the opportunity, I would like to introduce um, more of machine learning into it as well to identify better targets and better drugs as well. So this is how would you contribute? It's not like you have to. Um, uh, I say this many times in science, you just need to contribute to the knowledge. Your contribution is that's what you need. People think that you have to come up with this amazing uh, invention. It doesn't come up like that. It comes as a build up of accumulated contributions. Then it comes to something big, um, most of the times. So I used to feel yeah, (laughs) a bit like low, that, oh my God, I don't have a breakthrough. Like, I did not invent something, you know, something new. I, I used to feel like if I don't do that, I'm a less of a scientist. And until, yeah, uh, until one, um, our postgrad, um, is it, um, senior, we had like a postgrad, um, director, yeah, in our university. Um, uh, we had meetings with her. She does the postgrad orientation, which is also something very important. And one day she said to us that you just need to contribute. You don't need to save. Yeah, you want to save the world, but don't think, yeah, you make a contribution and that's it. And from there, it helped me now to do my work better because now I'm more confident. You know, before I used to be insecure, like I'm not saving the world. My my job is not good. I can't. But And that's why maybe many of the time people, when they see me coming to the lab with passion, they wonder why. It's because they don't have this motivation and I'm sharing it now. You just need to contribute and make sure that contribution is worthy or a high impact, full stop. Mm-hmm. And this is where you build the confidence is by knowing that you just need to contribute. So You don't have to be the best. Uh, exactly. Best, I don't know, the next biggest inventor of something. Yes, and you, and you can't do that actually. It's unrealistic expectation of yourself. And you will end up feeling less or insecure about your ability. So I think what that lady told us is to be realistic. Um, and that's how you build. And now you start by contributing. Maybe one day you become a PI. You will have more PhDs and masters and they run different projects. Little, little contribution. You combine it together. Now it's a breakthrough. Yeah. 
So and most inventions actually they don't come from planned things. They just Thank you. Sometimes, yes. And have you realized they don't just come from one single person? It's a team effort. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You can do it alone most of the time. Yeah. yeah. So you can, but it's most. That. You're welcome. These are the things that opened my eyes actually and helped me do my PhD with with love, you know, <laughs> and less stress. So. Yeah. So I'm always willing to share. Uh, did you find a drug target? I don't know. Um, I validated. No, I validated the uh, the drugs target, not the drugs themselves. Mm-hmm. So the next step, and then I uh, developed some parameters. They call them force field parameters. These are just parameters that would allow you to simulate the active site of these drugs. So. The next person, because they were not, uh, they did not exist. So if you simulate them, the parameters hold an iron within the CD structure of the enzyme, and they were not available. Now they are. You can simulate the whole uh, dynamics of the enzyme and the active site, including the metal ions, which means the future person who's going to do simulations in the presence of a drug, they can carry on the experiment from there and you don't have to develop um, a new parameters and the work is published mm. so you just go and read the paper find the values and incorporate them into your simulation package and run the simulation to, to, for accurate representation of the active site otherwise if you do not incorporate these parameters the metal ion would fly you literally see the enzyme moving uh, or um, um, what is it called it, the dynamics of the enzyme is changing or evolving, and then at some point you see the metal flying, <laughs> not held by the active site or the residue, you just see the metal leaving the active site. So this is kind of a contribution, it's not major, but it helps. It's a by the way. It, it helps. It look cute, good, big to you, but it's, that's a big one. I mean... Really, sometimes, well, yeah. I should add this to the low imposter syndrome. <laughs> syndrome is real yeah you tend to think less <laughs> sometimes if people don't tell you i don't believe it if no one tells me this is bad then i don't so yeah that's one of the laws let's bring that topic <laughs> roll back <laughs> so in any way um yeah so this is the kind of contribution you can add and also allosteric sites. I didn't. I also identified some uh, sites other than the active site of these enzymes, so you can target them. Um, by allosteric, I mean it's a site that is not the active site of the enzyme because these sites are conserved. So if you target them, you al- might also target the human's enzyme. So there's a cross of target um, um, targeting. You're targeting the humans and the parasites, so it could be toxic to the human and not selective. Yes. Now, if you find allosteric sites that are unique to the parasite CD enzyme, CD structure enzyme, mm-hmm. now you can selectively inhibit the parasite enzyme using these allosteric sites that are far from the active site. But once the drug is bound there, it will, it will induce uh, changes on the active site and inhibit the enzyme activity. So this is one thing. Uh, however, we don't want to keep it technical. Otherwise, yeah. people will be skipping the... <laughs> <laughs> leaving the podcast at random moments uh, but in any way there are there are more to the research there are more things yeah. to the research hey you sound very passionate about your to do yes uh, i i try i do now i hope to sound the same now in wet love <laughs> it's everything is learning and you know yeah. so flourishing I, I hope I'll speak the same when I'm talking about my wet lab experiments very soon. So, as for now, I'm learning and taking photos on the, the those uh, the suits, the protective suits. Yeah. The white, are they white or? Yeah, is, is it called a tevek uh, and a hood? Mm. Um, yeah, it's called tevek for personal protectors equipment. So, okay. yeah. Afra, you are an amazing um, talker. I appreciate that. Thank you. Conversationalist. Uh, what is that? I don't know. 
maybe the bartending yeah. position um if you do it part time it will be nice even if you do it full time it will be nice too I would love to. I just don't know how to start. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. Um, is there anything that you would want to put out there? And I don't know. Is there anything that you want to put out there that I have not asked? Actually, uh, um, um, yeah. Let me just say this. It might help people. Mm. Um, is. I, I, it's a more of a message actually for people to believe in themselves mm. and uh, never give up, right? Um, I, I remember when I first got to South Africa and it was my trial year, if I failed or had low marks I'll be sent back home. It's like being sent back somehow to jail, you know, cultural, cultural wise, you know, mm. I'll be doing things I don't want to do or stuff. So I felt more free outside. Now, I had to work hard. Now, um, my first day in, in class, the lecturer was speaking in English, giving that English was my second language and I've never practiced it outside. It was my first time. I literally did not understand a single word here. And it was complicated because he, it was not like a communication or conversation with not talking, you know. He was talking about protocols or networking or uh, computer architecture stuff, fancy big words. I, my head was spinning for a second there and then I stood up randomly and I told him I'm leaving. You know, I just left <laughs> and I, I could see the shock in his face, like what's going on? I just left the room. I went to the restrooms. Luckily, they were empty. I locked the, the one of the restrooms. Um, I went to one of them and I locked. And I actually literally stayed there for a whole hour. I think half of it was crying and the other half saying to myself, "What am I gonna do? I'm gonna, there's no way I'll make it. I'm gonna fail. I can't even understand. How is this? No, this is to, this is different. like I was literally um, in a in a terrible space and scared. Like I should maybe just call home and say I'm coming there's no point of trying and after the crying I just went outside wash my face and <laughs> uh, straight home spend the day at home and you see that's how it started day one actually my in a cry and feeling like I can't do it and as I said I mentioned earlier I actually completed that course as a top student top you know student, yes, yes. You come into a country, you have one year to study, uh, you have yeah. one year to prove yourself that you can continue to to be in school and yeah. do what you want, and you do not <laughs> know the language. Wow. Yeah. Oh my God. All by yourself. Crazy. How did you learn now? How did you learn uh, English? <laughs> and now the way you're so eloquent. I don't know, but I'm trying still till this day. <laughs> But yeah, I remember, like <laughs> it just comes, that's why I said believe in yourself, it just came out of practice. Um, the way I studied that year for the short course was through a translator. I used to have the dictionary that shows Arabic English and translate a whole sentence from English to Arabic and cite it. Just mm. like telling myself this sentence means this and this means that. And remember everything and somehow maybe it helped me sharpen it sharpened my brain like now I, I cite sentences and knowing the meaning in Arabic so I had to learn in two languages right and that's how I learn a new thing computer exactly in Arabic and some words don't even have a definition I was like what is this yeah. <laughs> so that's why I said Believe in yourself and that you can do it. What you need to do is just to put hard work and effort and um, consistency. You need to be disciplined and consistent. There are different components to success, but you need to find the right one. But it all starts from yourself, believing in yourself. And you attract who you are, not what you want. So become that person, you know, confident knowing what you want then you will attract whatever comes your way or whatever you want but you don't just um, ask for it like try to add all these components of success and stick to it and they're important most importantly have fun <laughs> yeah. 
Be a human. Yes. Have fun with all this. Have fun. Go dancing. Go hiking. Talk to people. Do whatever makes you happy. You know, and in that way, you'll find out that you even maximize on your success. It doesn't have to be. You don't have to be miserable to be successful. You can be a happy person and successful. It's the right combination. It's the balance that makes you go far. So this would be my closing statement. And um, if anyone would like to reach out to me, let me know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thanks for opening that, you know, channel for yeah. me to reach out to you. <laughs> okay.